Hi, welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD, where we're doing all things mental health and all things genetics. In this video, we're going to talk about what do you need to know before you buy a genetic test. We'll cover who actually needs to get a genetic test, what you can learn from a genetic test, and what you can't. And of course, some of the top things you need to consider before you buy. Let's jump in. <laughs> So first things first, who should get a genetic test? Genetic testing is actually not recommended for every person, especially in the field of mental health. You really wanna consider a test if you failed one to two medications, I would even say two, just given the fact that they're going to be pretty expensive in, in terms of investment. So if you fail two medications, then that's a time for you to start to consider, is this a genetic thing that's happening? When I say failed, I mean, you took the medication, it didn't work well for your symptoms, maybe you had severe side effects, something like that. You also want to consider genetic testing as if when you talk to your mom, your dad, your uncle, people that are close in terms of genetic lineage and you hear the same story about failing multiple medications, medications giving them terrible side effects, you definitely want to start to consider is what's going on with me potentially genetic because if it's happening with them and they are in your genetic lineage, likely it is also going to impact you. So that's how you decide if a genetic test is appropriate for you. And that brings me to what can you learn from a genetic test? So many of you are probably thinking, if I order this test, it's going to tell me exactly what I need to take and the exact right dose and that's it. It's gonna solve all of my problems. I truly wish. I've watched a lot of Star Wars. One day in the future we'll get there, but we're not there yet. Genetic testing can act as a guide for your clinician. You can think of it the same way as you would an x-ray. If you came in to me and you said, I fell down, Dr. Donna, and now my arm is killing me, I'm going to order an x-ray. And with that x-ray, I'm going to rule out a fracture. Now, if it comes back through the x-ray that you didn't in fact break your arm, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have ordered the x-ray because now I at least have a guide for what might be happening with you. And in this case, we know that it's not a fracture. It's not broken. Same thing with genetic testing. Usually when you look at these reports, you'll have a long list of medications and they'll use a color-coded system to tell you whether or not your genes are going to interact with this medication in any real significant way. You're going to have the list and that list is going to include medications that you may take and medications that you may not take. So it really is just a guide. It's not going to give you a specific, this is what you need to take for this amount, for this illness, for at this dose. Unfortunately, we're just not there yet. So it really is an opportunity for you to, again, just like with the x-ray, rule out what might be happening so that you can get a better understanding of what might be impacting your medication response and also understand what it might not be. All right, so you've decided that genetic testing is for you, you know what to expect, and so now all you need to do is pick an actual genetic test. So the first thing you wanna consider is cost because these things are not cheap. I have not seen a genetic test that's under $200. Typically your health insurance is not gonna cover the cost. So this is all out of pocket. Companies may have programs that help give you a discount or maybe even a payment plan, but you'll have to contact them directly to ask about those kinds of opportunities. So cost is something you definitely wanna keep in mind. This is an investment in your mental health. The other thing I'll encourage you to consider is the number of genes in the actual report. I recommend finding gene genetic reports that range from 10 to 13 genes. More is better, but less, not so much. If you have 10 to 13 genes, and 13 tends to be really the golden number, what that ensures is that you'll have enough genetic information to know most of what it, there is to know or most of what we can reasonably know with the science today about how your body responds to medications. So you'll know things related to your body's metabolism or breakdown of different medications. You'll learn things related to different transporters and receptors. And of course, you'll learn things related to how your immune system may react to certain medications. So definitely try to get a report that has anywhere between 10 to 13 genes to make sure you get the biggest bang for your buck. The next thing I encourage you to consider are perks. So once you get this genetic result, you're gonna get it in a PDF and, you're, and that's about it. So you wanna ask, do they have any kind of educational materials? Do they have a online community that you can engage with and learn and interact with others about your genetic information? What else comes with this genetic report once you have it in your hands? That's something to ask about. The other thing I want you to ask about is data portability. 
There's a lot of science that's done in this area and there's a lot we don't know. So I recommend that you ask about being able to download and save your raw genetic information for your own records. When you get the pharmacogenomic report, it is not including all of the genes that were part of the analysis. It only includes the genes that we have the science to know what to do with today, which means that tomorrow there may be greater insights that you may wanna take advantage of either for the same company or with a different company. And the only way that you can do that is if you have access to your raw data. So you wanna make sure that the data from the analysis, the full analysis is portable so that you can keep it as part of your healthcare record. Then you wanna consider turnaround time. On average, it's gonna take these tests around seven to 14 days from the time you collect the sample and they get it to the time you get the results. So these are by no means a 24 hour stint. If you have a really tight timeline in terms of when you need the results, you'll wanna reach out to that company and ask them how long does it typically take to get your results so that you can meet that timeline. I'm gonna glance over at my notes and make sure I'm not missing anything. <laughs> Last but not least, and probably the most important thing for you to consider is lab accreditation. The NIH has an amazing website that you can input a company's name and check that they are an accredited lab. I will also include that link to that website down in the description for that so that you can look at it. It also includes an interactive map and you can hover over it to see how many labs that are accredited are in your actual country and click that map for a full list of labs. So definitely make sure you're working with a company that is accredited. Also like, comment, and subscribe to this video. I'm accredited to tell you this information. But yeah, you wanna make sure that the, video, that the lab that you work with is accredited. That's probably the most crucial part of it all aside from cost. And that's it. That's how you pick a pharmacogenomic test. Again, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anyone that you know that's kind of on the precipice of making this decision. And I will see you next week. Bye.